Please pause the video and reread the problem before listening on. We've learned in this chapter that to find the potential difference between two different points, we can relate that to the electric field between those points. But one of the challenges of this question, as we will see, is that the electric field varies in this problem. Another challenge is that this question involves infinite non-conducting planes that are each coated in a different charge density and we have to go back to some material from chapter 23 and use Gauss's law to figure out the electric field produced by infinite non-conducting planes. So here is a representation of our setup. Again, we have those two infinite non-conducting planes. The one on the left has a negative surface charge density and the one on the right has a positive surface charge density and their coordinates are labeled. We've also labeled three key potential points. We're going to be discussing the potential at the origin, the potential at a point 50 centimeters from the origin, and then a point 80 centimeters from the origin. So we've labeled those with V0, V50, and V80 respectively. Now, as noted, we do need to figure out some electric fields that are produced by these infinite non-conducting sheets of charge. And from Gauss's law, we learned in chapter 23 that when you have an infinite non-conducting sheet of charge with uniform surface charge density, then the electric field produced by such a structure is given by this equation here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use that equation to calculate the electric field that's located between the plates and then also the electric field that is located on the far right side of the plates. And we will see why that will be an effective approach momentarily. So right now, our job is to calculate the electric field that is located between the plates. We might just call that electric field inside because it's kind of located on the inside region between the plates. Now, whatever electric field that's going to be is going to have a constant value, but it's going to be created by two different sheets of charge. So for instance, let's say we wanted to figure out the electric field between the plates. According to this equation derived from Gauss's law, we would take the surface charge density on plate number one, divide that by two times this constant, and then we're going to add that to the surface charge density on plate number two divided by that same constant. Let's talk about the direction of these fields. So let's just pick an arbitrary point between the plates. Let's say we selected this point right here and take a look at the plate on the left. It's negatively charged. So of course, plates that are negatively charged create electric fields that point towards those negative charges. So in other words, the electric field produced by the left plate is going to be pointing to the left. And then the electric field produced by the right hand plate while the right hand plate is positive and when we draw electric fields created by positive charges we want to make sure we point the electric field away from the positive charge so away from the positive charge would also be going towards the left that would be E2 so technically since they're both pointing towards the left we're going to have to make sure that these electric fields have a negative sign. So for this first one, we'll put in a negative right here. And then for the second one, we're going to maintain a minus sign as well. So we'll make that a minus. So now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of scoot down the page and we're going to plug in the surface charge densities. Now be careful, the surface charge density of plate one is technically negative because it's con coded in negative charge, but we've already accounted for the negative charge by making sure that we pointed the electric field to the left. So when you plug in the sigma one, just plug in the magnitude of sigma one, because again, we've already accounted for the direction of these electric fields. So let's go ahead and plug in the surface charge densities given in the problem. Now notice for the surface charge densities, we've multiplied by 10 to the minus nine because they were given in nanocoulombs per meter squared. So you just have to convert the nanocoulombs into coulombs by multiplying by 10 to the minus nine. So here we go. We're gonna get the electric field between the plates or on the inside of the two plates. And that turns out to have a value of negative 4237 and that'll be newtons per coulomb. Let's put a check mark next to that. That's going to be useful to us later, but now we have to step outside and look at the electric field on this side of the plate. We're going to that side because remember, we are asked to calculate the potential difference between the origin and then a point 80 centimeters from the origin. So we kind of have to know what's going on electric field wise on this side of the plate. Now we're just gonna call that 
E outside, we can pick an arbitrary point uh, in that region. So let's just say we picked a point here. Now let's look at the negative plate. Remember, negative plates create electric fields that point towards the negative. So we're going to have an E1 going towards that negative plate. And then the positive plate is going to produce an electric field pointing away from the positive plate. So that's going to go that way. We're going to call that E2. So notice E1 is going to be negative in sign because it's pointing to the left. And then E2 is going to have positive uh, or is positive in sign because it's pointing to the right. So we can set up another expression for the electric field on the sort of outside of the plates. And that's going, again, to be negative e1 and then plus e2 and then we can expand those electric field expressions by putting in the surface charge density divided by two times that constant once again when you plug in sigma one just plug in the magnitude we've already accounted for the direction based on the fact that it was a negatively charged plate so there are the values plugged in, and now we have the electric field on the outside of the plate, which is around negative 14, 12 newtons per coulomb. We'll put a check mark next to that, and then let's go back to our picture and take a look at those two fields. So there are the two fields. They're both pointing to the left because they turned out to be negative. The one between the plates has a larger magnitude, so we've drawn that vector to be a little bit larger than the one on the outside of the plates. And you'll notice that they're different. They're different electric fields. So the electric field between the plates is a different value than the electric field on the sort of outside of the plates. And that's going to make our calculation a little bit more challenging. If it was a constant electric field, it would be easier. But our strategy is going to be as follows. What we'll do is we'll find the, the potential difference from the origin to the plate located at 50 centimeters. So we're going to basically call that V50 minus v0. We're going to find that potential difference. Then we're going to separately find the potential difference from that positive plate to the point 80 centimeters from the origin. So in other words, we're going to find v80 minus v50. And then we're going to add those two potential changes together to give us the overall potential change from the origin to that point over there. So again, we're going to be breaking it up into two separate potential changes and then adding them together to get the overall potential change. And we have to do this because the electric field varies. It's different between the plates than it is on the outside of the plates. So we have to break it up into two separate calculations. Now, again, to do these calculations, we're going to be using this expression here to find the potential difference between two points and connect it to that electric field. So for instance, let's get started with V50 minus v0 and so we can see that that's going to equal the negative integral now the initial and final coordinates there are going to be zero centimeters and then 50 centimeters 50 centimeters is 0.5 meters so we'll go ahead and just use a standard unit there and then we have the electric field dotted with ds now a dot product can be rewritten as the electric field magnitude times this ds vector magnitude and then times the cosine of the angle between them now as far as that angle is concerned as we go from the origin to the positive plate in other words as we go from zero to 50 centimeters we're traveling in this direction so we have a displacement vector that points in that direction that would sort of be our little ds right there but the electric field is pointing to the left so if the electric field is to the left and ds is to the right then the angle between those two vectors is 180. the cosine of 180 is negative one so we can actually change this cosine theta to a negative one and then because we're multiplying by a negative one we can actually factor it to the outside so we're going to actually have a positive here positive integral and then from zero to the 0.5 meters and then we have electric field times ds now the electric field on the inside of the plates is a constant value we calculated it earlier it was that magnitude of 4237 newtons per coulomb but it's a constant value anywhere between the plates is going to have that magnitude of electric field because it's a constant value we can actually factor it to the outside here so now we have the electric field this is inside the plates we probably should have labeled that earlier and then we have the integration from zero to 0.5 meters of ds now the integral of ds is just basically the length 
of the distance from zero to 50 centimeters. That's what DS is. It would be like if we take that distance and we break it up into tiny little DS vectors, imagine tiny little lengths here. If we were to add the lengths of all those little DS vectors, well, we would simply get the length from zero to 50 centimeters. So that would just be, what, half a meter. So we actually can now rewrite this as the electric field inside multiplied by that half of a meter. Okay, very nice. So we're going to take the electric field inside and then multiply it by 0.5. And when we do that, we get a value of around 2119. This is a potential difference. We might just call it sort of delta V right now. So that's gonna be measured in volts. So that's the potential difference magnitude as we move from the origin towards that positive plate. So in other words, again, this is V50 minus V0. So that's what's going on from moving from the origin to 50 centimeters. Now we wanna figure out what's going on as we move from 50 centimeters to 80 centimeters. So we're gonna be setting up a very similar calculation, except we're gonna be using a different electric field because when you go from 50 to 80, the electric field has changed now. So we're basically just gonna repeat what we just did, but fill in some different values. So by a similar line of reasoning, we would end up with this expression. Notice we're now using the electric field on the outside. As far as the integral of ds is concerned, well, we're traveling from 50 centimeters to 80 centimeters. So that distance there, in other words, the sum of those little ds vectors, if we were to draw you know, an infinite number of tiny little ds's, the sum of those little lengths is just that length from 50 to 80 centimeters. So that's 30 centimeters or 0.3 meters. So we're gonna plug in the electric field on the outside and then multiply that by that length from 50 centimeters to 80 centimeters, which is the 0.3 meters. And when we compute that, we get around 424 volts. That's the potential change as we move from 50 to 80 centimeters. Now, we can at long last get the total potential change. Remember, this question wants the potential change between the origin and 80 centimeters. So it wants V80 minus zero, if we kind of adopt the notation that we've been utilizing. Well, as noted, we can compute that by taking the potential change from zero to 50 and then adding that to the potential change from 50 to 80. And if you look at that setup, you can actually kind of confirm that in a way because the V50 minus V50 would cancel and then you'd be left with negative V0 plus V80. But if you flip that around, you would indeed get V80 minus V0. So that kind of notationally shows us that this is a valid setup. We're just adding the two potential changes together. So we can take the 2119 volts and then add that to the 424 volts. And then the overall potential change as we moved from the origin to 80 centimeters is around 2,500 if you kind of round to significant digits. So the final answer here is gonna be around 2,500 and then volts would be the standard unit here. If you wanna write that in scientific notation, you could say 2.5 times 10 to the power of one, two, three. And that would be the correct answer as well.